Our goal in the study of field extensions is to figure out how to take a polynomial which has no roots inside of a field and extend that field so that that polynomial then has roots. We saw an example in the last video of taking the polynomial t cubed minus 2 over the rationals and then extending the field of rationals so that it included one of the roots, 2 to the 1 third of that polynomial. Likewise, we also saw an example t to the fourth minus 10t squared plus 1 over the rationals, which is irreducible. And when we extend, we get a root, radical 3 minus radical 2 of that polynomial. In this video, we want to draw a very clear distinction between the two different kinds of field extensions that this represents, according to which one of them not just contains one of the roots of that polynomial, but contains all of the roots of that polynomial. Those extensions we will call normal extensions. So the question is, when does an extension give us all the roots of a polynomial which was previously irreducible? Well, you can't always get what you want. So recall what I said in the last video about the extension to get a root of an irreducible polynomial where there was no root before. Let's take a listen. What we'd really like to be able to do is to build a field which is a little bit bigger than the rationals and which has a root of that polynomial which is irreducible and therefore didn't have a root before. So the point is, just because we get a root of p when we extend does not mean that we necessarily get all roots of p when we extend. The first example of t cubed minus 2 is irreducible over the rationals and therefore has no rational root. If we extend to include the real cubed root of 2 inside of an extension of the rationals, then we at least get a root of p. Meanwhile, t to the fourth minus 10t squared plus 1, also irreducible over the rationals and therefore has no rational root. If we extend by radical 3 minus radical 2 in that extended field, we at least get a root. And the question is, do these extensions also contain the other roots? Do these extensions contain all of the roots of the polynomial that we're trying to solve? In the first case, what are the other roots of t cubed minus 2? Well, they're the real cubed root of 2 times a number which, when cubed, is equal to 1. Now, there's only one real version of that. The other one is the complex version, called the complex third root of unity, which we can write as e to the 2 pi i over 3, or if you like, it's negative 1 plus radical negative 3 all over 2. You can check that when you cube that, you get the number 1. And so the other roots of t cubed minus 2 are 2 to the 1 third times zeta 3, and 2 to the 1 third times zeta 3 squared. But the issue is, our extended field q adjoined 2 to the 1 third consists only of numbers which belong to the system of real numbers. In other words, this is a subfield of the reals. But alpha 2 and alpha 3, those other roots, are not real numbers. And therefore, those roots do not belong to this extended field. Therefore, when we extended, we only got one and not more than one root of t cubed minus 2. What about t to the fourth minus 10t squared plus 1? What are its other roots? Well, you can check that its other roots are exactly what we get by changing the signs on the radical 3 and the radical 2. Radical 3 plus radical 2, negative radical 3 minus radical 2, and negative radical 3 plus radical 2. Where do those other roots belong? Well, we can check that this field, because it contains square root of 3 minus the square root of 2, call that alpha 1, that it must also contain the number 9 alpha 1 minus alpha 1 cubed all over 2, which you do out the arithmetic and find out that's exactly the square root of 2. So this field contains the square root of 2 as well. Also, it contains 11 alpha 1 minus alpha 1 cubed all over 2, which you can check is equal to radical 3. Therefore, this extended field contains radical 2 and radical 3. And therefore, it must contain all three of those other roots as well. So in this example, when we extended to include radical 3 minus radical 2, we also got all of the other roots of this polynomial inside of that extension. So clearly, there's a significant difference between the two extensions that we have here over the rationals. In the first case, we extended and we only got one root of that polynomial. In the second case, we extended and we got all roots of that polynomial. So here's a definition. We're going to say that a polynomial splits over an extended field E if there exists a collection of elements of E such that P factors into a product of linear factors over E, T minus alpha 1, T minus alpha 2, and so on. That then makes these alphas the roots of p, exactly. And so a polynomial splits over e if and only if all of its roots belong to e. So looking back at our previous example, where p was t cubed minus 2 and we extended to include the real cubed root of 3. The other two roots of that polynomial do not belong 
to the extended field. And therefore, t cubed minus 2, which was irreducible over the rationals, when we extend to include 2 to the 1 third in our coefficient field, factors as t minus alpha 1 times some other polynomial q. But we can check that that other polynomial, t squared plus 2 to the 1 third t plus 2 to the 2 thirds, just using a difference of cubes factorization, is irreducible inside of E. In other words, we can't factor this any further. And therefore, this polynomial does not split completely over Q adjoined 2 to the 1 third. If it did split completely, we would have to be able to factor that quadratic into a product of linear factors. Meanwhile, t to the fourth minus 10t squared plus 1, irreducible over the rationals, we extend to include radical 3 minus radical 2. And as we showed on the last slide, the other roots of this polynomial all belong to that extended field as well. And therefore, when we factor out radical 3 minus radical 2, t minus radical 3 minus radical 2, we can factor the remaining parts as t minus the other roots. Because all those other roots belong to E, therefore this polynomial splits over the field Q adjoined radical 3 minus radical 2. So the moral of the story is we can bring 2 to the 1 third into an extended field of the rationals without bringing along its conjugate roots. In other words, without bringing along the other roots of the polynomial of which 2 to the 1 third is minimal. But radical 3 minus radical 2 does not have that property. When it comes to the party, it brings all of its friends with it. We cannot have radical 3 minus radical 2 without also having its conjugate roots in an extended field. And the definition is a normal extension of a field is one in which every polynomial either is irreducible or splits completely. In for a penny, in for a pound. So if we have a normal extension of f to e, then any polynomial over f will either have no roots at all in E and still be irreducible. Or, if it brings along one of its roots, then that root brings along all of its conjugate friends. And so to look at our two examples again, the extension of the rationals by 2 to the 1 third. Is it a normal extension of the rationals? To answer that question, all we need to know is, first of all, what is its irreducible polynomial? Sorry, its minimal polynomial over the rationals. Its minimal polynomial is t cubed minus 2, irreducible over q. And where are the other roots of that minimal polynomial? As we showed right away on this video, those other roots are not real and therefore don't belong to E. Therefore, this polynomial t cubed minus 2 has one of its roots, but not all of its roots, in the extended field. Therefore, this is an example of a polynomial which shows that E over Q violates the definition of normality. So E is not a normal extension of Q because there's a polynomial that has one of its roots but not all of its roots in the extended field. But if we extend the rationals by radical 3 minus radical 2, what is its minimal polynomial? t to the fourth minus 10t squared plus 1. Where are the other roots of that polynomial? Well, they all belong to E, as we've shown. And therefore, all of the roots of this polynomial, which was irreducible over q, belong to the extended field E t to the fourth minus 10t squared plus 1 goes from irreducible over q to completely splitting over e. Does that make e a normal extension of q? All we have to do to finish answering that question is look at the word every in this definition. Do we know based on the fact that this irreducible polynomial splits when we extend to e, that every irreducible polynomial over q is either going to be irreducible or split over e? And we can answer that question in the affirmative for the simple reason that because p was the minimal polynomial of radical 3 minus radical 2, that implies that every polynomial that has radical 3 minus radical 2 as a root must therefore have this polynomial as a factor. And therefore, any other polynomial with radical 3 minus radical 2 as a root when we extend it from q to e is going to split. If it doesn't have radical 3 minus radical 2 as a root, then it's going to remain irreducible when we extend to e. So normal extensions are going to be the extensions we care the most about because they're the ones that we don't just get one root of our irreducible polynomial. We get all roots of any irreducible polynomial that has even a single root 